Kids are fine. We like kids. So this is ah, testing testing uh, frequently asked questions. I did solicit for questions, and some people uh, offered some questions, and I've added them in. And so we will get the exciting. You'll get a, like a free shout out for FAQ. So if you ever want to do FAQs again, free shout outs. I know we're all into shout outs for some reason. So like keep that in mind. So what labs do testing? That's the one I get asked the most. Like, where do I go? But I don't know. I'm just confused. Uh, here's the American, full of freedom and firearms. So it's vetdna.com, RAL, which is our sponsor, Fishhead Labs, Avian Exotic Animal Clinical Pathology Labs, which is, you can do it private party, but most times like a vet uses this one and they don't have a, like a super extensive catalog of tests they do but you probably have heard of them or if you went to a vet, gotten a report back from them. And then the University of Florida, which is vet mediated only. So that's the only way you can do something is through your vet, but they can do more kinds of things than anybody else. Yeah, 20 minutes, we'll be pushing it. And my dog wants to leave. Canada. So you would have to do CITES to get a uh, RAL to you. Uh, but the way fish head works is you can order the, the swabs from them. They will come to you in Canada and then, and then you will send the swabs to university of Guelph. We talked about this more on, on the episode with Kayla because they were sort of working together. So Canadians you're in, you're in for the stuff that fish head does. But if you want to do a test for the stuff that Ral does, you will need to do sites, sites, Fermenting. The UK, you have a lab called Pal Vet Lab, which seemed coherent. And then, Jana, can you read this? <laughs> the one the other ones. Vet Lab, run to some compass. Yeah. I had I to know. copy it. it. It's it's like CVUAL. And I'm like, that's a great acronym instead of. Yes. <laughs> instead of whatever Janet just said <laughs> and then Labocline in Germany so obviously the EU can like move it together um, and there could be more I just this is the ones that I know about and this is for our Australian friends it's a joke I have it on right side up but for the penal colony where all they do is drive on <laughs> the their penal oots colony. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I know Dr. Tim Hyman does Sunshine, and I know there are other labs that do NIDO, but I actually don't know which, if any of them are commercial or they're all associated with the university. So for any of our, um, you know, friends that are upside down, send me a message. Because I actually have like a, in the Their show toilets notes, like, go the wrong way. Everything's the wrong way down there. They're going to the servo and they're, and they're, you, and they're. Like, that's what I assume they're all. Are you a criminal? Time. You get to have your toilet go the wrong way. <laughs> uh, no, I love Australians. I just like to make fun of them because they're they're different. They're a different breed. How do I order swabs? Oh no! How do I do it? I don't know. Jessica, help! All right, all right let's get out of here. Let's order swabs real quick. Go to vetdna.com. Test dash type backslash reptiles. Here's the form and here's the supplies. Click supplies. You're going to go to reptile and amphibian testing kits. And you're just going to buy some. It's Hello. it's so, so easy. So I buy them in boxes of 100. I buy them in boxes of 100 also. But you don't have to buy them in boxes of 100. I believe that there's like a 20 this pack. A oh, and a 10 pack. Yeah, you don't have to, but eventually you have a lot of snakes and you oh, want to... Oh, it's funny. Mine is like right over there. Same box. You give people swabs or whatever. You know, the swabs don't cost that much from here. But and, and what if you drop one? So you always need extras. I leave them extra in my car. Whatever. It's like a tampon. You need it. I you have never know when you're going That's it. so funny. I also have like extra lab sheets in my car. <laughs> <laughs> extra pins like because you, if you drop it you need to throw it away and do it again so like this was very easy though to buy it, they get sent to you in like a week okay and then you have a box ready to go or you're needing to do fish head because either you want to they have like a slightly different kit or you have to because you're in canada you don't want to do customs 
you go to fishheaddiagnostics.myshopify.com backslash collections and you buy the kit which comes with shipping like prepaid to your destination so that's sort of why it's more expensive and then you wait for it to come it's also like a week or two to get to you and you could have them on hand ready to go this one comes with a dna stabilizer because it's sent to it doesn't have to be overnighted back so that's the difference if you care but if you're a person like i'm a person who has like many snakes many kinds got to do the to me Ra, i have to do Ral. so like shout out Ral. but if you're like i just need one kind of test fish head's fine good you know we don't hate anybody here love them all yeah all the companies are great do the one that works best for you i also use Ral because it works best for me mm-hmm. uh how do I swab? How do I do? Oh, what is that? So the most important part for the oral swabs specifically, and the oral swabs are the ones that have anything to do with most of what we're doing on snakes, is the coanal slit, which is in the top of the mouth of the snake. I, I think you need to say that again just for the people in the back. Okay. Some tests need poopy samples. And some need saliva samples. If you know you need saliva, your number one goal when going into their mouth is to spend most of your time at that special spot. It looks like Just... another special spot in case you forget. <laughs> right. You got to find it, though. It's the top of the mouth. It's called the coanal slit. It's right here. Birds have them. Lizards have this spot. It's where the, the nares sort of dump into the, the mouth cavity. And the reason why that is a better place to test, we're not like 100% sure, but it's probably because there's less, mm -hmm. <laughs> there's less, uh, it's, there's less like mucus from the whole snake. So when I open up a snake's mouth and I'm digging around in there for a good time, most of my 20 seconds of gentle uh, scrubbing is in the coanal slit. And then at the end, I'll just drop down and give her a little, just kidding. A little pick I'll, me I'll, up. A little pick me up around the glottis because that would be That's like what I do. A, a long the top and then the very last I just go and get like a whoop whoop <laughs> right and if it's a poopy sample I don't have pictures of that you're just trying to get some oh, small amount of poop not a bag of poop opportunity with a bag of poop Jessica no bag of poop <laughs> I didn't like feel like getting a bag of poop and taking a picture of it because you'd be surprised how many uh, not poops and then some places they'll want you to do a cloacal or a, an oral cloacal swab. So we obviously go oral not ass to mouth, but mouth to ass. So if you need to do both on the same swab, I don't actually think you need to, but Australians love it. They love to go mouth to ass uh, when testing sunshine virus. Because a lot of these, you can detect viral RNA in feces too. I mean, we know this from COVID where they'll like take a sewer sample and be like, how many people in this like 10,000 person neighborhood have it? I but... really hope that we don't have to tell people that you need to go mouth to ass. Everybody should <sighs> know that, right? Right? <laughs> I feel like that's like... Uh, I, I have that, heard of people doing like multiple oral swabs between snakes. So like, I don't know what we don't need to tell people. I assume we need to tell them everything explicitly also, could you imagine hrp giving a high school sex ed class like how freaking it would be awesome would that be i would go to that class yeah you yeah. remember uh before dr drew there was an old lady oh i listened to that? dr drew but there was like a somebody in the comments write her name she used to do like i don't know it was like tnt or something after at late at night and she was like so into butt stuff, you could tell. But she was like my favorite, I don't know, sex show lady podcaster. She was old as shit. Dr. Dr. Ruth. Ruth. Oh, I do remember her. Okay, yeah, that was like way, way, way. Yeah, that way. was my formative years of like sex I education. Think Dr. Ruth and Dr. Dre did a show together. Doc Dr. Drew? Yeah, that's what I meant. Uh, they did a show together, like a late night. Yeah, they but she was it. first, and I think that's how he got his show later. 
or yeah, whatever. Yeah, so then she was first, and then they had one together, which is what I listened to, and then he got his own show. Yeah. Classic cable TV, basic cable nighttime material. You know what I was doing at 14 or whatever. She did love the bottom. She was, like, all about that that prep. She was into it. Quit touching the comments. It's my job. <laughs> okay. I was just trying to help. Okay. Uh, Jurassic Art Reptile Design. Patricia, PJ, asked, do you use mouth props? I do not. Because I don't think you need it. But if you feel like you need it, I'm in. My problem just with... Sanitize, sanitize, sanitize. Yeah. If you're doing lots of snakes sequentially... Um, I mean, we can... I was supposed to do this. I have a like a demo. We, I, I don't have time to sanitize it if I'm doing like 10 like retests or whatever. So I don't. But you can. And also worry about like breaking off a lot of teeth, which is like a risk here. Which obviously snakes regrow their teeth and shed them. It's fine. But here's a snake. Oh, it's I have a green screen and a green snake. What an idiot. <laughs> hey, can you <laughs> make Chris, bring bigger? me a snake that's not green. Yes, please, Chris. Assist, assist. Um, also, you should make yourself very big. Like maybe like shoo me away and make yourself big. Is he so here? You see. Christopher! <sighs> I'm an oh, idiot. She's, a, she's a hollering. Um, I could just talk to the people if you need to go get one. All right. Okay, I can entertain the people. All right. So comment below. I'm ready who you, to who, get your who, anus ready. No mouth to ask. Who wants to talk about um, Dr. Drew and Adam Carolla? I was totally like sneak listening to it on my little like cassette tape Walkman in my room. So I didn't get in trouble because I wasn't supposed to like everything was censored. So I wasn't supposed to be listening, but I totally was. Who is Chris H? Chris H is Chris um, Hare. That's Jessica's husband. He's our number one fan. <laughs> she yells just like my wife. It is literally like the wife yell. The, the wife bellow. Absolutely. Yeah, you know, he's always in the comments making snarky comments. It's really great. If you watch when you, if you watch enough and you're in the comments and you can see he'll like pipe in with things like he piped in with there goes my tax return when the um, new ARS hatchling rat came up. <laughs> Good tidbits if you're paying attention. All right. Make yourself big, lady. I'm back. Make yourself big. Okay. I mean, you can be here. It's okay. I got a snake. I wanted a it's fake snake. Oh. I was just doing like a demo. It's fine. I got <laughs> he it. brought you a real snake. He brought me a real snake. Oh, round of applause, not... everybody. He is on it. I don't want it. She's mean. This one? Yeah. I don't want to swab a real snake. We'll do it for a YouTube video. You want me to do a real snake? Please give yeah, me a little Yeah, nice one. just do it. It's fine. Okay. It's a tiny but you got to make yourself big, Jessica. I'm I know, but it. you're not going to be able to see it. That's how I was going to do a fake snake. No. There we go. All right, fine. For you people, I'll do it. You can do them both, Jessica. Compromise is the key to happiness. For this snake's a baby. It doesn't need to be swabbed, clearly. So very, very sanitary to just shove it into your mouth and bite well, it the, off. the outside doesn't matter. Here, pull it. So we got a swab. We got gloves. The gloves aren't really... And so you don't have to wash your hands between as viciously... Right, you can just take the gloves off, right? Wash or sanitize. I got a snake. Snake. Oh, she, she does look fierce. <laughs> I don't know which. Oh, it's a boy. What? What? What is that one? It's like it's Angie a... had a uh, DG male that needs to go as like a pet. So you're gonna restrain the head, and if it's like a bigger snake, on, it's gonna screen. It's gonna try go. to coil up over your fingers, um, because. They don't want you to restrain their head and put something in their mouth. That's what girls say all the time. I hear. <laughs> so there's a snake. This is hard. Mm -hmm. Here's a swab. Be nice, everybody. It's backwards. For so us. I don't use a prop. I just use the the tip of the swab to the tip, encourage guys. them to open their mouth. Just the tip. That's the tip. It, it encourages them to open up. Just like oh, when here comes the airplane. <laughs> <Whee>! <laughs> 
and they don't want something in their mouth. So most of them will like gape because they want to fight you or bite right. you or whatever. And so, and, but like a big old boa will usually just like, has, this has happened to them like five times. They're like resigned to it. So a lot of times they won't try to bite you. They're just like, you're, I'm tired of this, but I'll tolerate it for 20 more seconds. Okay. So we'll, without doing anything, I'm just like forcing its mouth open. And I'm focusing way up here. 20 seconds. On that clit. I mean, what's it called again? Clo cl cloanal slit. Yeah, right there. Just the tip. <laughs> so it's been like 10 seconds, 15. You could sing happy birthday, just like when you're brushing your teeth or washing your hands. Get that special spot. That's right, and then Jessica. I'll do it quick around the glottis. And then we're done. The snake is mad, though, for sure. So you got to go put them back. Thank you, Christopher. And you don't want to touch. Yeah, if you touch the the swab to anything else, like the substrate, it's, you it's throw ruined. it away and do it again. Yes, it's ruined. So you have to be really like aware of what you're doing. It needs to go right into that tube. It can't touch you. It can't touch substrate. It can't like. Oh, I dropped it on the table. You have to do it. And again. then normally I have like a bag of unused swabs and a bag of now swab swabs because you're touching the outside of it you know, while you touch the snake. So the, the outside of it is now dirty. So I throw that in the like dirty swab to be sent. And then I throw, uh, and I take out the clean ones after I take off my gloves. Obviously I don't need this, but they cost like a dollar. So if you mess up, then you de-glove. Um, I usually will label my stuff before I swab. Oh yeah, me so, too. Because once you put it in the dirty bag or the finished bag you don't want to be taking it back out to label it because like she said if that snake has nido you're like recontaminating yourself right so i just do a number on the the swabs and then i'll have a a spreadsheet of like I'll, usually it'll be like for a row anyway you can be like animal id number and then like the type of test so sometimes i'll do boa panels on some crypto panels on some poopy swabs and then maybe i'll just do like a recheck of nido on a ball python or a recheck of arena on a boa so i i used all of them but so they can figure it out when they go there if you have like a little addendum to your form and we'll look at a form here soon so you don't have to like have printed out different forms you just need one form with your name and credit card information and then you can have whatever kinds of versions of tests you want with just numbered swabs sent yeah, that's what i do is i just flip it over and i number it for how many snakes i have and then i put you know to ball python i put the the id or the name i might all have names so i put the name and then the morph and then i put the test that i want and i'll like group all the tests together so like if five are getting a void panel i'll put those five together and then right. they say the next ones are crypto tests so i'll put those together just in those kind of groupings but they each have their own number and their own swap right and you don't want to be like weird about it and double check your numbers as you're doing it because like referencing you can your fuck list. up too uh, absolutely for sure <laughs> That's, I mean, that's one of the reasons I label first and then you check, like, so I fill out all the paperwork first and then I label all my things and then I set them up and then I like check it against the list and the number and the bin. So you, you're just like making sure that you're getting right. the right, the right. And I keep, snake. so I keep my like written up addendums forever. So like I can, re even if I, and I'll like keep all the results, I like, get emailed back in like a folder, but um, I'm just like. I'll go look through and I'll try to remember who I tested when, but if I keep all those addendums, I know who got tested when and, and in what frequency. I can't remember off the top of my head. They do stay pissed. They they resent you for what you just did to them. They're not oh, for like weeks. <laughs> weeks they're you open their hurt. bed and they're like, motherfucker, I you hate bitch. you. Except you Boas. Bitch. Boas, like, they get you used. They they're, just like, they're just like, I, I think you're touching me again. I don't really appreciate it, but this has happened a lot. The older ones, the the females, they get done like twice a year as it is anyway. So I don't use a prop. You saw how relatively painless that was. It's harder if the snake is bigger or wigglier, but that's why you need like backup to like hold the bottom third of the snake just so it doesn't wrap over you. Uh, easy though. So easy, but you can use mouth props. Maybe for a viper, you would definitely want mouth props. <laughs> if it's a viper, I'm not testing it. It's going to go wherever it's going for whoever else is. Uh, someone that. beautiful has joined us. My baby. <laughs> He's on the internet forever now. Okay. Let's focus. We're supposed to be being good. Okay. 
Then DGB Exotics, what to test for based on species? This one is hard, but I'm going to try to answer it. We're going back to the Venn diagram again, which we've looked at in the crypto episode. It's like, if it hits all three, you should test. But not, but you can maybe test if it doesn't hit all three. So like, does it cause mortality and morbidity in this or other species that I own? Does it have a commercial test? And does it occur at a significant rate in the species? If it hits all three, test. If it if there's no test for it, you can't test it even if it causes disease, right? Logical. <laughs> and then if there's a test for it, but it doesn't cause disease in species that you own, then you also don't need a test for it. Like arena in corn snakes. Corn snakes can get arena and they just don't care. And it doesn't matter. So even those are tests for it. I wouldn't test corn snakes for it. Because they don't even carry it. They just get rid of it. It doesn't matter. So I would never test a corn snake for arena. In general, panels are a bargain compared to like individual tests. So this is Rao's. Can you read it? I can't even mm -hmm. tell. Uh, this is Rao's form. These you are can read it if I make it big. Uh, I can't edit it right now. No, it I mean, doesn't I matter. I made my screen full screen. Okay. So these ones are individual tests. These are ones where Chad has lumped them together based on like frequency of use. So the Boyd panel, the respiratory panel, and the crypto panel. But he has told me like if people are like, man, I really need this panel and I think it makes sense, he would offer like a slight discount for like some other set of four or whatever. Just people need to ask him. He is so nice and he is so great. He will call you on the telephone. I don't know how he has time for that kind of crap. But <laughs> if you right, have I'll, questions I'll... or if you need help or you want to make your own panel or anything like that, you can absolutely email him and he will get back to you. And he will be so nice to you and not make you feel dumb and answer all your questions. He's really great. Mm -hmm. Or you guys can message us. Um, if you're in Canada, you can message Jube Jube. Um, she is their go-to tester human in Canada. Jana has a crotch nugget and Jessica has a fur nugget. Yeah, mine's like a beef nugget though. It's a like fur nugget. That big. sounds that sounds uh very <laughs> 70s. So the they can it's okay to touch the lung, uh or not the lung, like the glottis. It's just like the more you get the pool of liquid that's everywhere else around the coanal slit the l more likely you're getting you're diluting your sample correct that's all but it's you can not detect nido in poop so like how diluted is it at that point but the goal is to focus on the coanal slit because that's the most likely to get the viral sample for the ones that have oral swabs even for ones that aren't viruses that live in the lungs for example like arena you still want to be focusing on the coanal slit but some things you don't focus on the coanal slit because it's like crypto. The crypto lives in the digestive tract. So you're not usually doing oral swabs at all. You're going on the number two end, the back door. So even if you did a cloacal swab, it's just sort of like milling around in there. <sighs> that sounds fun. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. So like a lot of people are like, well, I don't care Th that stupid Venn diagram. I need you to tell me what to do because I can't figure it out. So here's me telling you what to do, but with the caveat that nobody really knows exactly what you should do because it's always changing because viruses are like becoming more and less popular. Like paramyxovirus to me rises and falls based on someone who keeps vipers or rattlesnakes or something also keeping something else like colubrids. So it'll get into the colubrid population because there's a hot keeper who cross contaminates. Then we'll have like a big spread of paramyxovirus and then all of a sudden it like goes away again. So like, I don't know what you should test. You shouldn't test for everything, but you should test for stuff based on like the, the person you're buying from's collection sometimes. What's Sanzenidae again? Uh, uh, Madagascar tree and grombos as a group. Okay. Okay. If they Thank have you. full species st status, I think they might have actually been bumped down to subfamily. So Sanzinine. I don't know. I need to like double check that. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> you can't keep track of all the taxonomy. Okay, so bows and pythons and 
the Madagascar tree boas and ground boas, anything on Madagascar. Usually, a Boyd panel is correct. Sunshine is, is, is specifically for uh, Borrelia, but Sunshine gets into ball pythons and Sunshine gets into boas. We have peer-reviewed literature evidence for that. Crypto panel, they don't always roll from their crypto unless it's a certain species, but I would probably test them anyway as you sort of go along and find a turd just so they don't hurt other ones. But this is like the order of importance. Void panel, sunshine, crypto. So if you're going to do only one, I would do like Nido for pythons and Arena for boas, but <coughs> it really depends. So Arena, there's like exceptions. Like Arena doesn't seem to bother rosy boas or rubber boas. So there's other exceptions. Like I'm not sure can can you sand boas get any of these, any of them? Should you still void panel? Yeah, probably. But I don't. Is that over testing? Maybe. That's why this is like confusing, and I can't tell you. I just know the species I work with, and their susceptibilities and the frequency of that disease in my community. But I don't know about other communities that well. Colubrids, always crypto panel, always all of them. They all roll. They all have it. They spread it around. They're gross. They can get paramyxovirus. They can get adenovirus. And they have their own nidovirus. But the nidovirus test that we have for ball python nidovirus, I don't know if it picks up theirs. It might. Uh, but paramyxovirus, adenovirus, nidovirus don't happen that much. It just depends on... I, so this is one where I probably wouldn't prophylactically test. I would test on symptoms. And they all, we'll do like shows for these one day. Most of them have like, this one is like uh, regurgitation, uh, respiratory, respiratory, uh, neuro and respiratory. So like an RI in a corn snake is suspicious to me uh, as always. Turtles and tortoises. I don't know why they're disgusting. They're like disgusting horse. They have like the most diseases of anybody. And I didn't even put all of them on here. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> Disease factories. I don't know what they've been in like. I I, I would not buy a turtle. Or I think it's because they're like kind of communal sometimes, depending on the species. They have so many respiratory diseases. Most of these are like respiratory symptoms. They are just disgusting little animals. I don't don't keep them. No, do keep them. They're cute. But I'd probably start with crypto um, and then a, a tortoise panel. But they get a bunch also. Uh, Australian skinks, they have like bad NIDO problems. Again, I don't know if the NIDO test we have actually works for their version of NIDO. But I would do a crypto panel, and they have their own adenovirus. And then amphibians, I would do kitrid every time. Sunshine oh. is not as happy as it sounds. Uh, did you highlight it? It's a. It's related to. It's in Paramyxoviridae, and I think it's a furlovirus, but it's like a different family or whatever. Now, it was discovered on the Sunshine Coast of Australia. It's in Moralia and it's escaped Australia. So we've seen it in other boids that are kept in proximity to Moralia and it's vertically transmissible. It causes like neuro uh, effects. So it's like, I don't know. It's like the arena for Moralia. It sucks. That's what I would do right now. Obviously, this isn't exhaustive, and I don't know if you should do all of them all the time to every snake, but I would do Nido every time for every incoming ball python, and I would do Arena for every incoming boa, and I would do Crypto for every colubrid and every lizard, but these other ones are worth looking at, too. Straight Blast Pythons asked... What would be the best way to systematically test a collection if you couldn't do it all at once? Jana, is your child okay? Nope. She's leaving. So this is the order I would do it in. Currently symptomatic animals. So if you're like, I think there's some sort of respiratory disease in my uh, rainbow boas or whatever. Go look at all the diseases that cause respiratory symptoms. If you did a culture and couldn't return a bacterial sample and test that, whatever. Then 
Then I would test if any of them had ever been symptomatic for that disease profile. And then I would test any animal who had ever bred or had contact with that symptomatic animal. And then now you're in the like, you're not putting out fires mode. You're just like testing stuff to just see what's going on. Any snake from a risky source or lizard or turtle. So a wholesaler, a show where you don't know like how clean that seller was or a collection where you know they had some problems with die-offs. Next, I would test adult males. <laughs> and you test adult males because adult, adult males have had more exposure to other animals than adult females. So breeding adult males. If they've never been bred to anything, then they haven't had that much exposure. But like a male ball python could be breeding 8 to 12 females. So he has the exposure risk of many more interactions than a, an equivalent aged female. Then females that have been bred obviously have a certain level of risk, less than a male, but still some. So that's what I would do next. Juveniles um, would be next because they're they haven't been bred, but they're older. So they had time to be cross-contaminated. And then babies, if you're buying them in, you're obviously always wanting to test on intakes. So you could maybe manage a refund, but babies shouldn't have non-vertically transmitted diseases because they're so young. They haven't had time to be infected yet. Sometimes they are, though. <laughs> Sometimes they come and they're positive. But this is personal experience. We're speaking from people. So always test on intake because if it's positive and you message the seller, there is a high likelihood that you guys can work something out and you can return the animal and get your money back and then buy something that's not full of nidovirus. Right. And then... In general, the lowest risk animals to me, no matter what their ages are, are from people who have good biosecurity and some sort of testing protocol. So can you not test their stuff? Yes, I still think you should because we're trying to like cover all of our bases. But like if someone was like, like I would buy a, a, an adult female ball python who was a complete hoe from Jana, right? Because it. The probability that even though it's like had a lot of, you know what, it's but much lower, but I would still double check it. She's still going to test on intake. I bought a juvenile from Jessica and she requested the results of the test because I tested it, Do it. on intake. And that was like a peace of mind thing for her collection and for my collection. And so even though I know that she is the most anal biosecurity person you could ever find, Mm, you still hopefully. test on intake right so so, so I, I guess like there are some people who are like i'll wait until i have a clump of good ones but even then i just you want to sort it out as quickly as possible so i think it was straight blast that was messaging me they were like could you test a certain percentage of a colony to have a certain percentage um probability of having discovered all of the infection and i'm like yes but the problem with that is like it's not that much more expensive to be 100 percent tested to me so like, yeah, like we don't definitely don't recommend that but a good starting place like she said is adult males adult breeding males if you do all of your breeder males and you test them and one of them pops positive then you know to test his entire breeding group and but just because that male has bred a female and isn't positive doesn't mean that he hasn't been exposed to the virus and one of his females could be positive and it would be good if you just did everybody but if you want a starting place you could start with the males and like work backwards from there um but a, a right. clean male does not mean that everybody in his breeding group is clear as well yeah, I was just reading a uh I think it was a doctoral thesis on sunshine virus that's why it's like on my brain so they like inoculated uh, carpets with sunshine virus. And there was a male that they gave a low dose of you know, viral particles to, and he defeated it and did not get infected. So someone could have it injected in their body and still not get infected. So you can pair animals. One of them has arena. One of them does not. And even touching peepees, they could still win. But you don't, you want to check. You want to check that that didn't happen and include like incubation time into your theory. Um, sometimes it's, they start to get symptomatic very quickly and sometimes they're never symptomatic. And that's just how the cookie crumbles that you would need yep. to check 
you can't not check. You can't just use your eyes and be like, it looks fine. Or I got this from a really reputable breeder. <laughs> they're immune from microscopic diseases because they're a reputable breeder. I don't even need a quarantine period. I'm just or they're shove really that expensive, so their price oh, paid a lot of money. makes them immune to diseases. I've paid also. a lot of money and been shipped a Nido snake. So <laughs> you decide. It sucks. Um, it's, it's a hard an overwhelming prospect to start. Um, but if you have ever watched our other Nido episode, which is audio only, um, is that episode seven? I don't know. Yeah. Everybody needs to go back and listen to seven. The arena yeah. one, the crypto the one. It one. says, I wish I'd done it sooner. That's my yeah. Nido story. Um, and literally like the big takeaway from that is I wish I would have started sooner. And so even though it's very overwhelming and it's very scary and you know, you're, there is business in, in play, like money's involved and also, you know, animals that you may or may not care about. Um, and so it's just like a very overwhelming thing. And so for me, that's how I started is I started with the males. And then once you get the ball rolling, each piece becomes a man a manageable size chunk. And then you're also, you know, start with your biosecurity protocols, add biosecurity protocols, and yeah, start that with your males. Free. Biosecurity and then, protocols are free. Absolutely. Like cleanliness is free. And start there. So um, you just do it one one step at a time, one piece at a time. And once you get that piece done, then you can plan for the next piece. Um, it doesn't have to be like, I have a hundred snakes and I'm testing a hundred snakes today. If that's too overwhelming or monetarily too much money, um, we do suggest that if you're thinking about buying, you know, a $5,000 mail and none of your stuff is tested and you're not going to test that $5,000 mail, maybe save that money and start testing your thing, your animals instead mm -hmm. and wait till you've tested before you make. Such right. A Do you want to kill that $5,000 mail with your nasty, skanky female? Mm -mm, no, you don't. So, um, so money, even though it's a stumbling block in our mind, because you're not getting this badass male snake, you are protecting your business and your investment. And um, that peace of mind, even though like it's not a hundred percent, that peace of mind helps me sleep at night. Um, and literally, like my only regret in starting on this Nido journey is that I didn't do it when Jessica very first said, "You need to be doing this."